In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. And welcome, special welcome to our visitors and guests. Each day, we make hundreds, if not thousands, of decisions. What outfit should I wear to work or to school? What should I eat for breakfast? What should I do first? Scores and hundreds, if not thousands, of little choices are presented to us throughout our waking hours. We probably choose most of them without giving them much thought. Perhaps we're, our choices are influenced by our mood or our particular preference at the, at the particular moment. Yet, when it comes to bigger decisions, often a lot of thought is required. And it cannot necessarily be dictated by what we are feeling at the moment or what our preference is. For example, I don't want to get out of bed. I don't feel like going to work. I'm not ready to apologize. With these types of decisions, we are motivated to make one particular choice because of the negative consequences of the other choice. In some sense, perhaps we don't really have a choice. With the biggest decisions of all in life, where there might be multiple choices even, all of them could, be, could bring about negative consequences. And of course, this would cause great difficulty in making the choice. What college should I attend? What will be my major field of study? I lost my job. What should I do next? I'm pregnant. I'm stuck with, between two feuding friends or family members. I have a terminal illness or disease. What treatment should I seek? Often, there are no easy answers. Look at Joseph in today's Gospel reading from the Sunday before the Nativity of our Lord. In Matthew chapter 1, we see that Joseph is middle-aged or older. He's betrothed to a young teenager because she herself is too old to live in the temple anymore. Joseph discovers that she is pregnant and he is not the father. What would most men do in this situation? Often, there are no easy answers. When a couple gets engaged, they share the news joyfully with others. Remember when the local paper used to carry these announcements? Now social media carries them much farther to a much wider audience. But this joy can turn to bitter anger when infidelity is suspected. Joseph could have justly exposed Mary, and she would have been ostracized, perhaps persecuted, or even put to death for her apparent transgression. However, Joseph was a righteous man, and therefore not willing to expose her to public disgrace, so he resolved to put her away or divorce her quietly. Often, there are no easy answers. Yet, just when he made this decision, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and told Joseph to go through with the marriage, explaining how and why Mary had become pregnant. Most of us might be thinking, well, I wish I had an angel of the Lord who would just tell me what to do when I have a big decision or problem. We often feel that we don't get clear signals from the Lord about what to do in very difficult situations. Yes, that's correct. Often there are no easy answers. However, there is hope and guidance for making these difficult decisions during trying circumstances. 
Well, first of all, we cannot underestimate Joseph's righteousness. A temple virgin would likely not be entrusted to just anyone. Rather, someone like Mary would be given to a man who was mature and able to take care of her, but more importantly, who understood where she came from and what her life was all about. And that was being wholly and completely dedicated to God. Mary, in some sense, was kind of like a very young nun or woman monastic. Secondly, it's helpful sometimes to try and read between the lines of the gospel to better understand the circumstances. It's easy to understand the difficulty of Joseph's dilemma because we know of similar stories in our own day. What's not so easy to understand, because the passage doesn't explicitly articulate it, is the inner struggle and effort that Joseph encountered to arrive at a place where he could be aware of an angelic visit and then consider, seriously consider, the divine message that was brought to him. I think it's reasonable to deduce that Joseph probably struggled in prayer offering up this agonizing situation regularly and repeatedly to the Lord, perhaps even many times a day, seeking solace and seeking guidance. In addition, Joseph probably consulted close spiritual advisors and friends, opening up to them about this seemingly embarrassing set of circumstances that his newly betrothed is pregnant by another person. What about us? Do we agonize in prayer? And when I say agonize, I mean intense struggle and effort. Think of Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane, knowing his fateful future and praying, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And that passage noted that Jesus was praying so hard that he was sweating and it was like drops of blood coming off of his head. How many of us even come close to breaking a sweat in prayer? Instead of praying, we often turn to distractions that help anesthetize us from the pain and the difficulty of our dilemma. These distractions can include work, food, video games, pornography, shopping, gossip, drugs, and many others. True prayer, true prayer will not numb the pain but it will give us the strength to bear it so that it is not overwhelming. Then we can think clearly and make good decisions. What about us? Do we consult close, faithful, spiritual advisors and friends? Regretfully, many priests hear about different, different, difficult circumstances after they've been complicated by or made worse by autonomous choices. Many people come and say, I thought I could handle it by myself. Uh, or say, I didn't want anyone else to know. Or say, I was ashamed and embarrassed. Think of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and the devil in the form of a serpent basically telling them, you can do it on your own. You don't need God. 
And then after they eat of the fruit of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil, the devil prompts them to hide from God in shame and embarrassment. Do we see the connection? Joseph had the same struggle. And it is depicted in many icons of the nativity, right here in our prothesis over here. You can see it if you're in the right place. Where he is sitting and the devil in the form of an old man is tempting him. Now, even if we do consult with others, it's sometimes perhaps done to confirm the choice that we have already made, rather to con than to consider other options. We may go from person to person until we finally find an affirmation of what we want, ignoring the many other messages leading in a different direction because often there are no easy answers. The agony of prayer and making difficult choices, that is the opening of our heart and mind and soul and body to the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. And it takes a lot of effort to set aside the thoughts and feelings that are born out of our own ego. But it's the only way that we can begin to hear the voice of God. Think of John the Baptist saying about himself and about Christ, I must decrease, he must increase. Prayer is saying to God, I cannot do it by myself. I need your help. Because often there are no easy answers. However, the voice of God, the Word of God, is not playing on a podcast or on a satellite radio station that we can easily tune into. The Word of God is spoken to us in the Scriptures in the church fathers and mothers, in the lives of the saints, and through contemporary people who have wholly dedicated themselves to God. Therefore, if we believe that we receive truly the body and blood of Christ in Holy Communion, then we should also believe that we receive the guidance and instruction of Christ in the words of the priests, of our spiritual fathers and our spiritual mothers, as well as other faithful, practicing Orthodox Christians. Now, just because Joseph was told by an angel what was going on with Mary and what to do about it, that doesn't necessarily mean that it was easy for him to take the next step. Another reading between the lines of today's passage would tell us that the friends and acquaintances of Joseph could probably figure out that Mary's pregnancy didn't square with the facts of their relationship. How many of us count backwards from a baby's birth early in the marriage to see if indeed it was conceived after the wedding? Joseph was not going to say that he was not the father but he was still open to ridicule and judgment for seemingly father, fathering the child out of wedlock. In similar manner, we may discern God's will through prayer and faithful advice from others, but that will not make our necessary decision any easier. We must still bear the consequences of that choice justly or sometimes unjustly. That's not easy. Often the easier decision is the one that brings less resistance and less negative feedback. We know that after taking Mary as his wife, Joseph, 
Joseph's journey is made more difficult because he's not able to find a nice, clean place for her to give birth. And later he will have to go on the run to protect her and the Christ child from the murderous plot of Herod. So things didn't necessarily get easier for Joseph because often there are no easy answers. My brothers and sisters, let us become like the righteous Joseph, praying each and every day. Use an Orthodox prayer book to help guide you in prayer. And one of the prayers that you might find helpful when there are no easy answers is titled, The Prayer in the Time of Need. It incorporates Jesus' words at Gethsemane for deliverance from the difficulty which besets me. More importantly, it asks God to take away fear, anxiety, and distress. And, most importantly, it asks God to help me face my difficulty with faith, courage, and wisdom. In other words, the essential things necessary to face adversity are total trust in God, fearlessness towards consequences, and the ability to make ongoing sound judgments because often there are no easy answers. But remember Jesus' words as we conclude today. He said in Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, take my yoke for it is easy and my burden is light. In other words, with Christ, it may not be easy, but it will absolutely and undoubtedly be easier than without him. Amen. Kala Christugina, blessed Christmas.